Hi and welcome again to Tech It Out. Well, the post has come and I've got this interesting package here which says lithium ion battery do not load or transport if damaged. So let's get it open and see what's inside. And we've got a little white box which is a smartwatch. Now I've recently done the Samsung Gear 3 or S3 I should say, Frontier version. This is something a little bit different. So let's open it up and see what's inside. It's very white. So we'll pull the watch out itself and put it to the side and we'll see what's in the rest of the box. We've got a micro USB lead. We've got some Chinese and English instructions which of course as ever goes into the drawer obscurity so off they go let's have a little look at the watch itself it's quite nicely packaged actually it's nicely presented nice white box and little bag and then we have this plasticky white um, eye watch sort of looking smartwatch let's have a bit of a closer look at it it's got a standard strap on it it's a, a rubberized strap but i must say the strap itself apart from the actual latch feels quite nice a metallic back there with a hole in it probably a reset hole for when probably software crashes don't see that usually on a smartwatch I wonder if it's got any charge in it. We'll try and get it booted up in a second, I think. But first of all, let's try and get her on my wrist. Now, as I said in the Gear S3 video, the reason I like my Microsoft Band 2 so much and the original band is because it's so easy to get on the wrist. Whereas these ordinary straps, I always find very fiddly and struggle with, as you can see here. But I will get it on. There we go. And it does feel quite nice on the wrist once you've actually got it on. It fits quite snugly. It's not too big on the wrist either. Comparing it to the Galaxy Gear S3, I think it's actually a bit smaller. Let's give the screen a bit of a wipe there. It seems to pick up fingerprints quite easily. That's nothing new. And we'll try switching it on. See if it's got any battery in it. Yes, it's it's powering up. That was quite quickly, actually. <laughs> I, I'm quite surprised it powered up quite that quickly. I don't know if you heard it there. The microphone probably didn't pick it up very well. But it's got quite a quite a high pitch jingle to it. So going through, we got this little QR code for downloading the app for the phone. So we'll do that now. I'll speed that up. That's the QR code itself and we get into the settings and the screen isn't really particularly responsive and when it does respond it tends to activate the, the button rather than scrolling bit annoying that let's let's get in there again It's doing what it wants to do rather than what I wanted to do. We'll try and get some of this set up in a moment. If I can scroll through it first to see what's on there. Let's go back to the beginning. Power save mode is off. Well, we don't need that. Go back into the settings. Quick response, oh, it's gone back to that QR code. Common settings, time. Right, let's, oh dear. Um, <laughs> I think this might take a little bit of time. So let's try and choose, the... oh dear. <laughs> try and choose the country again. Go a bit slower, perhaps it will I think you may want to make a cup of tea by the time I get to London. 
or coffee, whichever is the preference in your country. This screen is abysmal. It does have the full gamut of countries on there by the looks of it. Are we nearly there? London, yes, we're there at last. Okay, so I've set the country. Now we need to set the time. It's gone into the right area this time. Just check the correct time and then we'll set it on the watch. Now how do we set it? I suppose we press that down arrow. Yes, it looks like. Set the date. If we can get to respond again. It was doing well up to that point. Nearly there. So that's the time and date set. Then we want 12 or 24 hour. And we'll stick with the 12, I think. Now, as you can see, after doing all that, it didn't actually set the time. So I've got to go through it all again to set the time and the date. It didn't save it for some reason. Not exactly sure why. Back again to the QR code, common settings, time. Oh, it's at least it stayed on London anyway, so that's good. I don't have to scroll all the way back through that and waste half my life. So we reset the time and check again now. Now, what do I do here? Down. Okay, back into date. Eleventh, not the twelfth. Now, how do we save this? Doesn't give the option anywhere to save. Home button does nothing. Ah, right, that's very um, interesting. <laughs> okay, so you have to press the menu button to save. I'll have to try and remember that for the rest of it now. So we leave the update with time is that what it says update with time ah update with time zone i see okay so we leave that on not that i'm going to be traveling anywhere with this language we leave that on english i'm not going to scroll through everything there i'm glad it was set to english to start with otherwise i've been here all night unlocking typed so this is the type of watch we want on the front screen i suppose when we first unlock it let's try the analog one first and see what it looks like and it yes um give it a wipe so you can see it a bit better it looks like a child's poorly drawn watch in paint Okay, let's try another watch face and see if we can find a better one. There's another analog there. I press the same one again. Let's try that. What else is on here? Motion sensor. Flip to mute incoming calls. Flip to mute alarm. So I suppose you, if you turn your hand down, face down, it switches off the sound. Brightness mode and the length of time the screen stays on. 
and turn that back up again. Time and vibrator. I think that means how long it vibrates for when it has a message for you. Or an alarm. So we'll go back. Again, it's going where it wants to go rather than where I want it to go. And we'll change the clock face now to the second one. See what this one looks like? Well, yes, that's a younger child's version of a clock face. Keep going into that QR code. Digital clock. I think this is the default one. Yes, that's the default one. And the best one so far. There's one more. Let's see what this one is. And that's just a bigger version of the shortcuts. Okay. If we go back to the standard one and leave it on that, I think that's the best one to use. What else have we got on here? So we got to restore settings to the default. Let's clear everything, I suppose. Sometimes it seems to be very sensitive, other times it seems to be totally unresponsive. And I can't move those settings any further, so there can't be any more settings. What other icons have we got here? Let's have a little look on the screen. Calculator, sleep monitor, drink and sedentary. Hmm. Anti-lost, power saver. Pedometer, stopwatch, Bluetooth. Let's have a look at the Bluetooth. We'll switch that on. Toggle it on and off there. Okay, we'll leave that on then. Visibility. Now we'll switch this on and we'll connect it to the phone, I think. So I'll just grab my Note 5. And lock it off screen. And here's the app that I downloaded earlier from the QR code that kept popping up. Anytime. Seems to be about as responsive as, as the watch. Yeah, steps, calories, and so on. Distance walked. Looking for device. Let's have a look, see if we can find the device then. Not coming up with anything yet. Let's just toggle the visibility again, I think. Let's see if it picks it up then. A little while later, we've actually managed to find the watch from the app. And it's linked up now, it's synced, or syncing, I should say. Must remember that the menu button is the OK button as well. So now it's all synced together. I don't want to start with an account with anything yet. So what else have we got here? Let's carry on with the watch. So we've got my device, what's that? Search for a new device and, ah yes, it's got my Galaxy Note on there, that's good. My name. Doesn't seem to do anything apart from show U8, so I take it U8 is the name. It's got the diner messaging, call logs and notifier. Music, capture, alarm, and calendar. And then we back to calculator, sleep monitor, drink, and sedentary. 
And we've got a profiles button there as well as the power saver. I expect the power saver, I don't know, turns it off quicker or something. Not exactly sure. Perhaps it turns the screen brightness down. Profiles there. It was silent, meeting and outdoor. So you've got everything from off to as loud as it will go, I suppose. Turn it on to the loud mode. What else can we look at here? Now this watch is supposed to do almost everything that a smart watch would do really. Collect messages and appointments from your phone. You can also control the you can also play the audio from your phone if you're using the MP3 player. You can use it to take photographs at a distance from your phone. And it seems to be picking up the the camera. You have to switch the camera on the phone on first. Ah, it's that menu button again, it's the capture button. But strangely, it's captured it on the phone. No, it's not actually, no, it's not captured it on the phone. It's captured it on the watch, but not on the phone. Which is strange, and now it's become totally unresponsive. So let's try that again. Press the capture button, takes a photograph, got an image on the watch, but it hasn't taken the photograph on the phone. So that doesn't seem to work. So I think we'll leave that there for the moment and carry on. Let's give it another wipe. It does pick up the fingerprints a lot. Got this calendar. Okay. Jump to date. Go to today. So that's all it does. It's just a calendar with dates on. You can't actually go into it to see what's in your diary for that day by the looks of it. My phone book. I'm going to blur this out actually got all the contacts from my phone book there so I can make calls direct from the watch via the phone. Just check once more. Jump to date. No, that, no, that doesn't do anything. You can't look at anything that's on your diary via that app at all. The home button doesn't seem to do anything. So what shall we look at next? Perhaps the calculator. There we go, we got a calculator. Wonderful. Yes, okay. Come in handy, I suppose, if you need to add up your bill after you've been to McDonald's to see how much you've spent. About the only place you'd want to use that, I think. Monitor your sleep. Who actually sleeps with their phone on? Don't sure anybody does, I wouldn't. Definitely, not even with my Microsoft Band. You got that stopwatcher, so you can time your runs. And then you got the phone function, you can dial, or you can go into your phone itself and make phone calls or indeed you can answer the phone if it rings again i've blurred out the screen here so that private information can't be seen but it does actually work i've just answered the call that i made to my phone with the watch and it's working
The speaker on the watch is pretty grim and the microphone going back to the phone is just about the same. So we've looked at how bad it is in use. Let's have a little look inside it as well. Let's see if we can get it open and see what makes this thing. I can't really say tick, can I? Uh, <laughs> makes this thing work so badly. A little metal tin plate on the back. I'm not sure how that nice that would be against the skin at all after a while. Could cause... Well, apart from catching, because it's quite sharp. If there's an allergic reaction to that, it could be quite... quite distressing, I think. <laughs> Let's get this open anyway. Four screws, all little Phillips. Head screws, and the back just pops off. There's a little LiPo battery, which is just sat there loose. And make sure it's in focus for you. For the size of the phone, the battery is quite a substantial battery, I suppose. Then we got this here, which is the vibration motor and the speaker. The speaker is very loud, I've got to say, but pretty tinny sounding. You wouldn't want to try and use it really to make or receive calls with, or indeed to play music over, unless you were desperate, and you would really have to be desperate. So let's get the back back on. So what do I think of this then? Um, is it crap is the question. I'll tell you how much it costs first. It costs £7.95, which is about $11, I suppose. It did come fairly quickly. It was with me within, I think, four or five days it arrived. The postage was free. That said, considering what you get for your money, I think probably, yes, this is going to be the first item in the Is It Crap series, which I say is crap. The strap is very nice on it. I think that's about all I can say. The plastics are cheap. The screen is unresponsive. The apps are mostly unusable, so... I don't think I can really recommend you buying one of these watches. It does look vaguely iWatch-like, I suppose. Would I give it to a child as a child's toy? No, I don't think I'd even do that. If the screen was a decent screen and the apps worked, I would say yes, it, it was okay, and I wouldn't give it the title as being crap. But as it is at the moment, in its present condition, I certainly cannot recommend it. So this is the first of the Is It Crap items that has not passed the test, as it were and has been labelled as crap. So what are we going to do? I think I've got the perfect solution to what we should do with this. Thank you for watching.